they requested that I read it. So the question is, is your work changing only the current biological paradigm or also physicalism? What are your thoughts about panpsychism, idealism, and process philosophy? Okay. Um, well, so so yeah. So so here's the thing with with physicalism. Well, let's let's start with that. Uh, I I think it's pretty clear to me anyway that um, important things uh, that serve as causal forces that are important ingredients in explaining why certain things happen, and in particular in helping you uh, invent new things and uh, and control uh, certain events and so on are not coming from the physical world. And what I mean by that, I don't mean anything too exotic. I mean, well, maybe it's exotic. It's the same thing that mathemat that uh, Platonist mathematicians. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a simple, a very simple example. Imagine in this world uh, where the highest fitness is a triangle of a particular kind. Yeah, so you have a population of different shapes and the highest fitness is a very particular kind of triangle. So evolution, you know, you crank through evolution, cranks through a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of uh, generations, and you find the first angle, and that's great. And then it cranks through a bunch of other generations, and you find the second angle, great. Well, now something very magical happens. You don't need to spend time looking for that third angle. Okay, for some reason, uh, you know what the third angle is. You got it. Evolution just saved one third of its effort in searching this thing. Now, where is so, so? This is not philosophy. This is very practical. Um, you, you've just saved a bunch of time in evolution. W where did that come from? I mean, we, as biologists, we love two things: we love environment and we love heredity. So, was it was that part of your heredity? The fact that uh, in the flat space, uh, you know, triangles add up to 180 degrees. Well, not really. Was it part of the environment? Well, not the physical environment. It came from somewhere else. It came to, from the same place where the distribution of prime numbers comes from and the truths of number theory and the fact that NAND gates and computer science are, are special. And uh, just all these, there's, there's an incredible richness of um, uh, of, of these patterns uh, for, for, want of a better, of, for want of a better word. There are these patterns and I think evolution exploits them uh, uh, e extremely well. I think that's what evolution is actually doing is that by building, by evolving physical bodies, what you're really doing is evolving pointers into this platonic space of patterns. Um, I think that uh, uh, evolution exploits these, these, these free gifts. You know, here's another example. If you, if, if you, if, if you, if evolution discovers a voltage gated ion channel, Right, that's a voltage-gated current conductance. That's basically a transistor. So you've 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 uh, discovered this protein. Well, automatically you've made a transistor, which means if you have a couple of them, you can make um, uh, logic gates, which gives you a truth table with some interesting properties. You can do computation. You you didn't have to evolve the truth table. You didn't have to evolve any of these properties. Uh, you you know uh, if if you're doing if you're a sunflower and you're doing the Fibonacci series, that has some uh, some amazing uh, properties. Uh, all of those are, are kind of free gifts as far as the physical world is concerned. But what evolution has to do is to find uh, uh, find a way to make a physical object that enables that stuff to. Um, and this is uh, uh, this is a this is a word that uh, a Whitehead I think used uh, to uh, ingress into the physical world. So all of these truths of mathematics that apparently don't depend on the uh, physical um, constants of our universe, right? So at the Big Bang, if we reshuffled all the physical constants, all the stuff about the physical world would be different, but these mathematical truths would still be there. These forms would still be there, right? This, these, these patterns would still be there. So, so from that perspective, um, my view is distinctly non-physical because I think that um, these things are important and causal. And then here's the, here's the important uh, step. Every, of course, all biologists know about this stuff, but one thing that people do when they encounter these patterns or interesting properties of uh, networks, for example, such as, uh, you know, Stu Kaufman discovered and all these things, what people will say is, well, it's a fact that holds. These are just facts that, you know, why, why do all networks have this interesting property? Well, it's just the fact that holds, it. you know, that's just it. So the problem is, if you, if you just call these things facts that hold, it's really to to me that's really a very mysterious view. What you're saying is there are there's a random bag of facts that hold out there somewhere, and we do things, and then we get surprised. Hey, look at that! It's emer, and they'll say it's emergent, right? So this is emergent. Well, that's great. It's emergent, and we got surprised, and it's cool, and we write a paper on it. Now, how about how about finding the next emergent thing? Well, I don't know. We'll just have to make stuff and 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 hope something else emerges. So so I, I don't I don't like it. I think that um, I think it's a it's very much a, a kind of a, a pessimistic or a defeatist uh, attitude. I think the whole point of doing science is the assumption. It's very much 
much an assumption um, that there is order behind all of it. And it's not a random grab bag of stuff. So I would prefer to think as, uh, as uh, at least um, as, as many, not all, but many mathematicians think that this is not a random set of stuff that just magically emerges, but rather the space of these, play, these, these patterns has order to it. It's an actual structured space. And that our research agenda here is to actively explore that space that by making now how do you explore that space well we make we make these pointers evolution isn't the only process that gives rise to these pointers we make them too when we make xenobots uh, you know these little autonomous uh, beings that are made of um, uh, frog uh, skin cells what we are doing is exploring the space around the, the the normal frog embryo has shown us one point there's one point in that space and m many of us w tended to think that well that's all the genome can do is it pull it it's it's responsible for that particular shape and that particular behavior but actually it turns out that no that hardware can do a lot of other things and uh you can use that as a vehicle to explore what's next to that and then you can sort of branch out from that i mean if you if you look at the mathematicians they 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 literally have a map that, that, like there's a map of mathematics you know and, and they can say okay so here here's uh, topology and then here's I don't, I don't know number theory whatever so they already they already believe that that there is a space and it's a structured ordered space that we can uh characterize by um uh by effort and by rational uh, rational thought and that what they're doing is discovery not invention that they're discovering these things they're not inventing inventing them and i i think that's very much true here so in that sense i break with physicalism because i don't think it's sufficient to understand the hardware or or aka the pointers i think you have to understand what the pointers are pointing to and as far as i can tell and and you know i'm open to being proven wrong if uh, if that if it goes that way but what i what i see is that the forms that it's pointing to are not determined by physical facts which takes us outside of physicalism but not into the area of mysterianism because because that's the that's the thing right a lot of people um, are tied to physicalism because they believe that if you abandon physicalism then anything goes right and then you're in this like land of mystery and then you you know uh you can't do science and i think it's the exact opposite I think if you insist that the physical facts are the only facts and everything else are just uh, these kinds of patterns that hold, that I think is 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 the far more um, kind of mysterious view. And I think it's perfectly fine to, and in fact, essential to have a research program where we try to understand what is the space from which uh, physical um, structures are drawing uh, these, these these forms. So um, so that's a that's a long story about physicalism. And then um, I guess I'll, I'll just talk about the process philosophy. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that's absolutely the way we need to start thinking about it. And there's a couple of papers that um, I wrote recently really asking what does it mean to think of yourself uh, to, 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 to uh, for, first of all, to think of yourself as a process and to uh, lean into the idea that every system, whether it be a learning uh, organism or an evolutionary, um, you know, a whole evolutionary lineage, uh, you face the same problem, which is if you don't change, then you will either die or fail to learn. You know, you'll be you'll you'll disappear. But if you do change, well, then again, you're not the same thing you were. So again, you're kind of disappeared, right? So so this idea, there's this 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 paradox where if you think you're a persistent thing as opposed to a process, you face this paradox. But we can take that. Uh, so that's that that insight has been around for a really long time. But we can take it further and. You use it to um, dissolve the sharp distinction between um, between what uh, uh, James called thoughts and thinkers. In fact, he had said this, you know, that the thoughts are thinkers and this idea that if if we are a process. So, so here's the very simple argument. If we are a process and we are agential, then processes can be agential. And that raises the big question of, well, what other processes are agential? Right. And um, and so this is this is something that that I've been working on recently. And then there's um, uh, I've uh, the one piece that I wrote starts with this uh, kind of a really adapted uh, story that I'm sure was a was a science fiction story that I read years ago. But I can't recall who, who, who or what. But it's, it was this idea that um, uh, these creatures come out of the center of the earth. Right. And they're incredibly dense. So they come out of the they come out uh, into onto the surface. Well, what do they see? Well, they don't see any of us and they don't see any of our stuff because to, to them, they are so dense to them. All of this is like this really thin plasma, you know, this thin gas that surrounds the planet. They don't see any of it. And so they're walking around, stomping all over everything, the way that we disturb patterns and in, in odors of flowers and everything when we're walking through a garden. And one of them is a scientist and he's been watching the, uh, the gas and he says to the others, you know, I've been watching this gas 
And uh, there are these like patterns in this gas. There are these eddies and they kind of, they do things and you can almost tell the agential stories about them. You know, they, 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 it almost looks like they have memory and it almost looks like they want things. And the other, and the others say, well, that's crazy. We're real. We're physical uh, beings. We are agents. Patterns can't be, you know, patterns in the gas can't be agents. And, uh, and by the way, how long do they, do these hang around for? He said, well, they have a, you know, mean lifetime, about a hundred years. And so, well, that's crazy. You know, nothing interesting can happen on that, on that scale. Um, and so, right. So, so you kind of, think, so, so you think about that and you realize that the distinction between I am a real physical thing. I mean, we're not right. We're obviously metabolic patterns that, uh, that kind of hang around for a little while and change in various ways and come and go, uh, and that uh, that really opens up this idea that right. So so if these kind of patterns, if if our kind of patterns can be agential, and also it is very observer dependent what kind of patterns you're willing to take as possible agents, then what else are we missing? Right? What other patterns all around us in various excitable media? Uh, and I could rattle off all kinds of weird you know weird forms of excitable media that have patterns in them. Um, wouldn't it be interesting to to really have a research program where we uh, take that perspective and we ask, okay, so who's the in, in, in the in the in the uh, kind of computational paradigm? What you're asking is who's the machine and who's the data, right? So so typically you have this idea that this is uh, you know this is a Turing machine paradigm, which I'm in no way saying this is uh, sufficient for for any of this, but it gives us an idea. So you have a machine and then it processes passive data and the machine does things to the data, but uh, from the other perspective, you could say, no, actually, it's the data that's in charge. The data tells the machine what to do. And so could we have agential data? Could we have thoughts moving through a cognitive system that are themselves agents? The cognitive system is their environment. Maybe they're doing some, some niche construction and modifying their environment to persist longer. We, we you know, It's well known that certain kinds of um, obsessive, depressive thoughts and so on actually modify the brain. They actually modify synapses to make it easier to keep having those same thoughts. Right. So you could do this kind of um, scale agnostic uh, or scale free sort of thing where who the who's the machine and who's the data uh, becomes very not obvious and very um, observer dependent. So that's uh, I guess that's what I can say about that. That, that was brilliant. Um, we're over time on that question. So just answer if it's um, a yes or no. Do you get a sense that in the same way that uh, quantum physics is challenging physicalism, your work outside of your sphere is might might be doing the same or too early to tell? Uh, well, I, I mean, yes, I think I think that, uh, you know, the interpretation. It, it, OK, uh, there's 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 two two ways to look at this. If you look backwards. So pretty much anything that we do, well, pretty much anything that anybody does, but but certainly for our for our work, um, once we've done it you can look backwards and you can come up with a physicalist explanation what happened working work you know working backwards it's always possible you can always zoom down to the lowest level and say oh well that was just molecules moving around according to the laws of chemistry there's no magic there and that's true there's the it's never going to be fairies underneath it's always you know the laws of physics but 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 the real question is okay well what's your what's what's your next uh, discovery then right then then you have to ask okay so so you have a um, a worldview that uh, every worldview facilitates and, and prevents you from doing certain things. So, so the question isn't, okay, let's have somebody do something interesting and then tell a physicalist story about it. The question is, what did your worldview allow you to do? Mm -hmm. And I definitely think that uh, the things that we are doing and the things that our other people are doing in this space are suggesting that uh, the, 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 the physicalist view is, is limited. You know, thinking that these things are just emergent and we just got to kind of hang out till, till we find one is, uh, I think that's very limiting. So in that sense, I think, I think we're challenging it.